What's up, y'all? It's your guy, eBay Fight Prediction in the building. And this is your Drickus Duplass versus Sean Strickland film study break down the man's of man's kind of fight. Two guys that like to put the dukes up and go to war. Uh, <laughs> obviously, I feel like this is a fight. Um, out of all the title fights that's been announced, this is the fight. For the hardcores. I, I, I truly believe if you're a hardcore fan, you want to watch this fight. Um, because both of these guys are not real. I mean, Sean is becoming a star, right? He, he kind of is. Drickus is, it kind of is. But these guys, it, let, uh, let me put it like this. It, it's been what, 2017, I think, the last time. We've had a title fight that didn't have the name, especially in the middleweight division. It didn't have the name either Robert Whitaker or <laughs> fucking uh, Israel Adesanya. Um, in, in especially in a main event of a pay per view for the middleweight title, I think we're in a great, glorious position. And both these guys aren't necessarily known to the public, but the hardcore fans know this is a very, very close fight, and this is a very, very divided fight. You're either Deshaun. Strickland country, USA baby, or you're with the South African that earned the N word card after knocking out evil boy Robert Whitaker, or you're on that side, right? You're kind of either on that side or you're on that side, but it's a great fight. Uh, I, the odds obviously re represent a basically near even. Um, both guys have a legitimate shot of winning, and it's just such a you know, kind of like puzzling fight. And obviously, you know, these guys, they brought it up to 10,000 in terms of the hype for it after they went in, decided to do a brawl for all uh, before UFC 296's main event. And their little brawl for all that lasted a minute and probably 60 seconds was still more entertaining than Colby Covington versus Leon Edwards. The biggest letdown of eBay fight prediction history. I've never been more let down in that main event than... Uh, especially by Colby Covington's performance, but eh, whatever it is, what it is, uh, that's in the past. <laughs> but uh, obviously, a great fight nonetheless, though. Um, and you know, press conference went nuts. I mean, Drakus Duplass. I thought he was getting assaulted in that press conference, but he decided to say, "Hey, man, I love the comeback." And if you watch Drakus Duplass's whole entire career, he's been coming back from adversity or he's been coming back from being knocked down or losing in the fight just to win it, just like he did in this press conference. And he hit a nerve of all nerves and talked about Sean Strickland's childhood. And that's what makes this fight so personal because um, going into this matchup is we don't know what kind of mentality Sean Strickland's coming into this fight. Is he coming in with a pure head and to follow a game plan that Eric Nixon is laying out? Or is he just trying to go out and kill this man that might go into, you, you know, the favor of Drickus Duplass? And I don't think Drickus intentionally wanted to go there. Sean just kept calling him, you know, gay and shit for him and his coach's weird way of, I guess, kissing each other. And I don't know. Hey, to each is his own, right? Fucking, it's a free world. Um, but my, my, my main point is, though... Um, Drickus won the press conference. He he won the trash talk, and I think Tron's a better trash talker than him. And I thought he was proving that, but it's just that one little shot that he took. You don't know what kind of Sean we're going to get. We never know. Sean probably does his best work when you attack family and you, you go to that area, or Sean is the best uh, that he can be when you attack that kind of area. You, you just kind of never know. Uh, we always saw it with Leon Edwards, right? That... Hey, man, even though, you know, Colby went to a very, very low, low spot, uh, which I completely disagreed with, all right, uh, even though my Twitter got fucking suspended, I, you know, uh, I, I did feel like that was a low shot, and I, I do have the screenshots. I, I said that was an L. But, um, and I, you know, I obviously Drake is, you know, being called what he was, being called by vulgar, vulgar, very vulgar words from Sean Strickland. I understand why he went to that direction, but still pr pretty low shot. Uh, and, um, we've, no we've noticed that there's been a bit of, um, how, how do I say? There's, there's, uh, you know, there's been a bit of a response, 
uh, when you, you go that pretty low and, you know, fans aren't, aren't messing with you. But Drinkers Plus got the pass, supposedly. So, hey, it's okay when Drinkers does it. I'm not trying to make an excuse for Colby. That's not what I'm trying to do. But I'm just saying it's, it's kind of weird. But, hey, I guess the way Drinkers said is a little different. But, hey, it is what it is. Um, but that's how intriguing this fight is. I've talked about all angles of the fight, that it's it's a fight that, you know, um, that hasn't been made in the middleweight division in a long time. We have two pol polar opposites uh, and two rising contenders fighting, you know, obviously fighting for the belt that isn't Robert Whitaker or uh, Israel Adesanya. Obviously, the bad blood these guys have, and especially, and now I'm going to talk about it, the styles clash that these guys are going to bring. Uh, Strong Strickland is a, you know, f a very unorthodox Philly shell. Um, but squared up stance, uh, boxer basically, uh, that fights MMA. Uh, <laughs> and it's kind of crazy. And Drickish Duplass is a very unorthodox, offensively based, uh, MMA fighter that's well balanced in a lot of assets to the game in terms of striking and grappling. But he, he puts this barrage of multiple attacks on you and you're overwhelmed with this offense and this wave, the tsunami, if you want to call it, of grappling, wrestling, striking, and just basically overall offense is being put on you, even though it might be untechnical and it, it might be a bit, you know, overreaching where he's, you know, leaving his chin out in the air, but it's the offense he presents to you that overwhelms you. So you just can't take uh, advantage of the counters that are there and he, he breaks you basically breaks you and it, it's such a it's such a great matchup because both these guys are, not, are unorthodox in itself the way these guys fight you don't see guys like them a lot you don't see guys that are trying to replicate what these guys are trying to replicate so that's why that's what makes this matchup so well uh so fun and obviously you know sean being more of a, you know a decision kind of fighter and drick is being a complete finisher so i think that's what makes this matchup so great and uh, you know even though the ufc 297 card is garbage i i, I want to say it is a garbage card this fight in itself fucking and also honor allen versus moser i love is a great fight too that makes me hype for the card nonetheless especially these kind of fights um, but yeah, enough of the, you, you know, <laughs> intro in itself. Uh, let's talk about the tail of the tape. Obviously, we know Sean, Deshaun Strickland, Mr. Tarzan is the champion of the world, comes to a record of 28 and 5, um, is fighting out of Las Vegas, Nevada, age 32, a height of 6'1, and a reach of 76. Uh, Drew Suplex comes to a record of 20 and 2, is fighting out of South Africa, baby, age 30, a height of 6'1, and a reach of 76. Um, so interesting. Um, the reach, uh, I think it's, it's something that's really cool in the matchup. Um, uh, I think both guys have had a lot of reach advantages over some of their opponents and that's what's kind of led to some of their victories. I especially feel that way about Drifus Duplass. I felt like that played a major factor in his Robert Whitaker victory was his reach advantage. Uh, obviously he's super long and he's just really wirely, uh, wiry and at the same time big. He's a tank and it just, it, it does go, um, to his favor uh obviously and obviously sean strickland in himself you know the jab the one two all the straight shots you, you need to have that reach you need to have them long arms so that obviously goes to him too um uh and i think it's gonna be interesting to see how both of them kind of deal with each other um when it comes to them having the same reach i feel like sean will have a better uh, adjustment because obviously he dealt with Israel Adesanya who has long uh, long arms. Um, I don't know if Drickus will be able to take someone with the same kind of reach. Uh, someone especially backing him up. They both go forward, so someone's gonna have to will, and it's gonna be interesting to see how how either kind of deals with being backed up, you know, um, and how they kind of adjust their their game plans when they're on you know the back foot so it, sh it should be interesting to see how how well this matchup plays out but besides all that though let's get into the film that i wanted to talk about so badly so i did a three fight film study uh on this great matchup in itself um i i talked about you guys how it knows you, you guys know how it goes <laughs> sorry for the little uh little you know fall in my words but I look at three fights. I look at, you know, a matchup where they fought a very similar opponent to their, to the opponent they're fighting right now, uh, in the past, um, and see how well they did. If they did good, 
I'll talk about that uh, particular matchup. Then I'll talk about the one they did bad. And then I'll talk about their most recent performance and how well they looked. Um, and we'll just talk about that. Uh, let's start off with Mr. Steel Knox, Drinker Suplex. I feel like a lot of people forget this guy used to be a welterweight, which is kind of interesting. Both of them actually used to be a welterweight. And um, I, I wanted to talk about his Roberto, 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 sorry, couldn't speak. Roberto Soldic, uh, matchup that he had in KSW. This was back in the day. This was the rematch. Obviously, he, he won one of these fights. So it is interesting to see, um, how Soldic responded, obviously, in the rematch. And this was complete domination from Soldic, uh, in this whole entire matchup. And it's something that Sean can look at. Um, obviously, Soldic is a completely different fighter than Sean, but, it was the distance management, the counter punching uh, of Soldic that let him win this fight. He took advantages of of Jerkus's sometimes ability to take damage, and his his biggest problem, I feel like, uh, in a lot of his fights, where and I feel like a lot of people gave him those early fraud accusations, was the fact that he's just kind of taking too much damage, and he's he's just too open, and Soldic took advantage of that relentlessly he was just attacking him at will and it was just a step back right hand over and over again obviously he would loop it with the you know right hook cross and he was just completely hurting um Drickus. and the body kicks by the way was also big here more body kicks from Soldic, uh which was big in this matchup and it was just the right hand was just too much he just did a good job of stepping back and attacking with the right hand and the lead hook and then just just beautiful takedown defense here from Soldic. and he controlled Drickus. uh Drickus really had no any offense he kind of got dominated in this matchup honestly if i'm being 100 percent honest and he just he, he dominated him. A uh, great body kick by Soldic again. And then beautiful takedown defense by Soldic. Uh, and Drickus just looked lost, man. And that's the issue with him, man. It, he's kind of like trying to find things in these fights. And that's what I've noticed. And Soldic just kept him at bay. Oh, hurt him here with the right hand. I forgot about that. Then obviously he draws the takedown. But he was very measured. He was very patient. And a be another beautiful body kick, and he just had him against the fence, just teeing off on him here, um, just just really controlling the awkwardness uh, of Drickus and just battering him with the right hand, and eventually just catching him on the chin, eventually and knocking him out and finishing him. And I think this this fight in itself kind of put Drickus in a box where I think a lot of people, even me, I I am a um, I guess you can say a Drickus early Drickus hater, uh, and you know sometimes I still I still am critical of, of his technical ability uh, in there. He does a lot of things that you just you just you don't normally see at a basically number one contenders right that are wrong, and he got punished for that in this fight. Um, you just can't overextend every combination. Uh, your hand has to go back to your chin, and I'm not saying he doesn't do that. But it's just like there's these long pauses in between where someone could just slip and rip and just attack him. And I just felt like he got away with that so much uh, in the UFC. And I feel like someone's going to punish him for it. They haven't. But Soldic did punish him for it. And maybe he learned from it. He's gotten better. Obviously, this was at a lower weight class. This was like maybe, what, two years ago when they fought. Um, so I... I, I Oh, no, nah, this wasn't two years ago. That's not true. I shouldn't say that. It wasn't two years ago. Um, but what I'm saying is um, this was a long time ago. So obviously he can learn. And I, I do think he got a little better. I mean, he just beat Robert Werger, for God's sake. So, yeah, I, I think, you know, anything can be forgiven. But um, I, I do think people that called him a fraud and, or maybe still to this day do call him a fraud, you know, they're not wrong if you watch this. Well, I shouldn't say they're not wrong, but they're not wrong to think that um, if you watch this fight in itself. Uh, and that's the only tape evidence you have of, uh, of Drickus Duplass. But yeah, but obviously Drickus, I, I, another fight I watched was a teammate of Sean Strickland was his Brad Tavares fight. Um, and this was an interesting fight in itself because Brad did really good in this fight. And Brad did a lot of things that Robosa Soldic did, controlled the awkwardness of Drickus Chaplas in that first round, man. You know, he countered him a lot and he showed great takedown defense. Uh, fucking Drickus here, fucking 
goes for a lateral drop and ends up just falling on his back, which was fucking hilarious. But, you know, he does a good job of scrambling back up, uh, obviously against uh, Brad Tavares. But, you know, he could not take Brad down. And Drake is just a great grappler. That's something that, you know, is going to be used a lot heavy in this matchup. But he just couldn't get the takedowns here uh, uh, against um brad and it was interesting to see that he just could not get the wrestling to go on and uh, yeah and obviously brad was just able to counter him and hurt him a little bit especially in this first round and kind of control him but what drickus is so good at is overwhelming guys with that tsunami of offense and he just took brad's space and he didn't allow brad to to counter anymore he just got in his grill and just was scrapping with him and Brad got hurt, man. And uh, to be honest with you, uh, the knee to the face of Brad didn't help that much. So I, I will say that there. Um, and obviously I think it changed the, the whole direction of the fight. Um, and dude, spinning, <laughs> spinning back fist from Drick is here. Um, the one, two, and he's just on Brad constantly and not giving Brad any space to, to move. And he's, it's just a constant barrage of, power punches too that just led to Dirkus Duplass being considered the victor here and it, it was a great win um I mean a really first of all a good comeback man he, he was getting beat up in that first round and was looking like a fool and then the counters in my opinion were there for Brad to, to take advantage but Dirkus was able to overcome and again he got in his grill and overwhelmed him with this kind of pressure where Brad was just he kind of was a punching bag in there after the first round. And um, I thought Brad just kind of fucked himself over. Um, he could have won this fight, but it just didn't go his way. Obviously, it was a close fight. Uh, I just think him bleeding everywhere wasn't good. And I think the knee that Drickish landed completely changed the momentum of the whole fight. So, so yeah. Um, and I, I think it was just one of those things. And then obviously, we fast forward all the way to a matchup where... I, I completely felt like Drake Duplass outperformed expectations by insane, insane credibility uh, was his Robert Whitaker performance. Um, Robert Whitaker, the eve of Robert Whitaker, my arch nemesis. <laughs> that man was running amok in my middleweight division and hadn't lost a fight if it wasn't if his, if his name wasn't Israel Adesanya, um, the guy basically was running the division as, as a number one contender gatekeeper. Um, and Drukish Duplass ended that run, um, in spectacular fashion. And I, I have nothing but respect for him for doing it. And it was insane how he went out there and dominated him. Um, I mean, Rob gets the early takedown here, which was impressive, but besides that, it was all Drickus Duplass from here on here on out. And I, I was just impressed. First of all, how Drickus was able to muscle uh, himself up from that takedown. And then to just basically start battering Rob on the feet. And it was weird. Beautiful jabs here uh, from, from Drickus. Uh, and he just, just took rob space away and again the offensive tsunami that he brings and then the big little <laughs> fucking head and arm throw he gets on him and then obviously um the ground and pound that he lands on robert whitaker's face it was just too much for rob and he eventually gets overwhelmed and it, it was crazy because everyone in their mama said drick has had no chance and he just went out there and just dominate this guy. He was doing pullback counters on Robert Whitaker for God's sakes. Then lands a beautiful jab here, rocks him, and Drick is, you know, obviously he's fighting a guy that I think is way, way better than him technically, but it was the durability or the lack of durability from Rob that just showed so much in this matchup. And then a beautiful body shot to the finish uh, against Rob, and he finishes him in the corner. And I think Drick is new, unless if it was a head kick. There was nothing offensive in terms of power that was coming to him that he couldn't take. Um, so he just went out there and decided to run over Robert Whitaker. Uh, one of the only things I was really truly impressed about in this in this matchup was the fact he took him down. That's insane. I think Robert Whitaker has been known for great takedown defense, and he controlled him for uh, for a little bit too. So it's like. For him to just go out there, finish him, take him down, dominate him, and just make him look like a nobody, look like a fucking schmuck. And I've always thought he was, by the way. 
Uh, I just didn't predict it that night. I, I will be honest. I, I did pick Rob like a fucking a narc, but uh, <laughs> but Drickus did the world a favor, and this this young Eritrean African boy will will never forget the favor that the real South African did, and he earned his N word pass that day from you from yours truly, baby. But again, Robert Whitaker is Robert Whitaker, and this is Sean Strickland he's facing, and you know to be honest with you. Drickus Tuples was on a collision course for Mr. Israel Adesanya after this match. We all remember the face-off, the, the super fight that was supposed to happen. And a guy named Sean Strickland ended that. But before we can talk about how he ended that, let's talk about the film study that brings us here. Obviously, Sean Strickland, I looked at three matches for Sean. Um, and you know, it kind of goes the same thing how I did Drickus. Obviously, I looked at the loss to Roberto Soldic. Then I looked at the matchup against uh, Brad's Force, where he, I felt like he fought a former, well, he's a teammate, but a similar opponent to Sean Strickland. He beat him on obviously his most recent matchup, Robert Whitaker. So let's talk about Mr. Sean Strickland and a guy that really reminds me of Drickus Chuplas in this matchup in particular. Is Mr. Kamaruddin Usman, and I saw what Usman did to Sean Strickland. Uh, it, it's it's something that it, that I think Drickus Duplass needs to be watching on repeat because Kumar Usman broke Sean Strickland down based on takedown feints. The threat of the takedown was the reason he won this fight. That's it. Um, Kumar Usman goes for the early takedown here and takes him down. And dominates him uh, in this first round in particular. Um, and he just was on Sean Strickland in this first round. Did not let Sean Strickland move. And I think it's just imperative for Drickus is to really get the grappling going on in the first round. He needs to win the grappling exchanges against Sean. And that's what, even though Sean tried to scramble a little bit against Usman, when Usman broke him, he, he gave up a little bit in this first round and eventually he just laid down, accepted bottom position and basically Usman, uh, you know, just, just landed here. And that's what led to the knockdown, in my opinion, in the second round for Usman was because simply my, the point is you're thinking about the wrestling, you're thinking about the wrestling. The guy just dominated me, you know, <laughs> in this first round with the wrestling. He shoots for a takedown, kind of half-assed shot for a takedown, goes up, throws the overhand, or like kind of like a, like an over-lead hook, kind of jumps into it, catches Sean. Sean didn't see it coming. He gets dropped, and, he, you know, it was kind of all she wrote. He was on autopilot this whole fight after the knockdown. He was completely out of it, Um and just, man, Dude, fucking Usman was feeling himself in this. Uh, sorry for the interruption, y'all. Uh, the phone kind of died out. But yeah, uh, they, like I was saying, Usman was feeling himself. He was he was moving around, kind of just jabbing at him, ha having fun in there, you know. Um, and he, he was just just doing his thing, jabbing to the body, do the little Superman thing, coming coming ha with that bitch, you know. Uh, it was kind of funny seeing him do that. Uh, and then obviously he gets the last takedown, wins wins the fight. Uh, dominate Sean Trickland and is is considered the victor here. Um, and you know, hey man, it it is what it is uh, for Mister. Um, you know, Sean Strickland was a long time ago. It was at welterweight again, like same thing. Yeah, and it's kind of funny how similar some of these guys are. Uh, him and Drickus, uh, like even though they're so polar opposites in terms of their style, their personalities, but I feel like they're come up to to this moment. Both guys that you know, have, have been through adversity. Both guys weren't necessarily given the, the best shot to being a champion or a number one contender. Um, and they, they rise above that. And obviously Sean Strickland, it, it was kind of tough to find an opponent that, that mirrored Trickus Duplass, but I had to think real hard because I had to think about a guy that's a good grappler, decent striking. Um, but, is offensively an offensively based fighter and you know who popped up in my head the goat brendan allen and sean strickland does have that win over mr brendan allen and man a, a, honestly a win that has aged fucking beautifully for him and he he dominated brendan with a jab and it was kind of crazy because when I watched this fight, it's like, who is this guy? This is not the Brennan Allen I know. He even took down Brennan Allen, for God's sake. It was kind of crazy. But um, 
he dominated him with that one too. And it was constant. And Brendan just kept going forward, kept eating, kept eating. He didn't move his head. Uh, he didn't faint, but just Sean just kept peppering with the jab, peppering with the jab until Brendan just really couldn't take it no more. And, and it was beautiful to see how Sean was able to just control Brendan with a simple jab, a teep kick to the body, which is, was big for, uh, for Sean. And, but yeah, it was, it was the jab. It was the jab and anything that, Brandon would bring in terms of a, a brawl, uh, too much velocity. Sean knew how to overcome, either get to the clinch or get out. And it was just a, the more defensively sound fighter here. A uh, good, you know, one, two that tripped up, uh, Brandon here. Um, and it, it just was too much for him, man. It was just, it, it was a barrage of straight shots to Brendan's face and eventually, his chin gave out, you know, he got knocked out, he got finished, and it was a loss that I think to this day haunts Brendan, I think he, he even affected him going into his Chris Curtis fight, Um, you know, just Sean being in the corner, all the Trish talk, but, you know, he's risen above this loss, and I, I do think they will run it back one day, but... um. But Deshaun was the better man, and there's no denying it. Um, and, you know, Brendan, his lack of defense and his defensive responsibilities what failed him here. Um, and, and that's what I see in Drickus Duplass a lot is in a similarity there. And if Sean can do the same thing, now, yeah, I know Sean is known for having a lot of decisions, but Sean, if he touches you, you, you could drop, you know, you're, you're no one's Superman in this game. So if, if, if Strickland can, t can do what he did in this matchup against Bernal to Drickus Duplass. Drickus is in a whole world of hurt, man. Because, man, you spoke on that man's childhood. You made fun of his traumas. I don't think he's going to forget. Um, and I, I kind of like feel like Sean Strickland is the kind of guy that, that even believes in his world he's never been good enough. And when he fought Israel Adesanya, he just had this big chip on his shoulder when he fought him. It was the way he kind of stood to him. And it's weird. I don't know if anyone else can see it. But the way Sean Strickland approached Israel Adesanya with, with something to prove. That he wasn't scared of him. That he he wasn't feeling all this ruraha bullshit about him being the style bender. He checked all his kicks. Uh, blocked all his head kicks and just walked him down, put the jab, put the one, two, took the space away from him. Beautiful jab here on Adesanya. And yeah, it's one of the biggest upsets of all time. But it, in my opinion, it was Sean Strickland's greatest moment of his life because he went out there and proved to the whole world how great he was because he went out there and knocked that boy down and put up eating on him um, in, the, in that first round. My God, that one, two down the pipe. And Adesanya, I mean... I don't know, man. I said it. A lot of other people said it. I, I thought he was going to win this fight. I thought the leg kicks were going to be too much for him. The only guy that didn't want to follow the fucking script was Mr. Sean Strickland. And he went out there and whooped the shit out of Israel Adesanya. And this wasn't just it. The first round just wasn't it. He went out there and continued to batter uh, Adesanya, man. And he just had him figured out here he, he knew him and um in the third round the teep kicks were big for for sean strickland um and he did a beautiful job of kind of like weaving and bobbing and then landing counters on adesanya um and just just the counters that he was landing on izzy when izzy would try to like kind of slip back he he cornered izzy he just had izzy covering up and just taking damage here he just beat him up he beat him up. He walked him down. He dog walked him. There's no other way to describe this fight besides what it is. It's It was a dog walk and beat him. The team kicked there. He just walked him down like he was a nobody. And then this fifth round here, Sean, Deshaun Strickland came out, yelled at Adesanya, called him a pussy, called him a dog eater, whatever you want to say. Your fucking pink nails, your, your pink hair has got to go. And I'm taking the damn belt and we're bringing it in. To the United States, baby. But it, it was just one of those great moments uh, of Sean Strickland's career where you, you really look back and he was just flawless. Yeah, I know he lost the second round technically, but he he was flawless in this matchup and he was phenomenal. And I, I just cannot take nothing away from him. Um, but yeah, you know, it is, it is what it is. Obviously, um, that is it kind of for the film study breakdown. Now, obviously, we're at the point where you guys need my breakdown. So we kind of talked about both sides. Um, let me, I'll give a, a reason why I think um, 
we'll talk about Drickus, obviously, and why I think he has a good chance of really winning this fight. Because even though maybe Sean Strickland ruined the plans of an Israel Adesanya and Drickus Duplass fight uh, down the line, and you know maybe Drickus also ruined the plans of Robert Whitaker running it back with Adesanya for a third time. The reason why I do think that Sean Strickland might lose this fight to Drickus Duplass is because of the emotional state that he, he might be in. Because he is a a very cerebral, very cautious, very patient fighter when he's in there. You can just see it in his eyes. He doesn't show a lot of emotion until the end of the rounds or maybe even all the way to the fifth round. You look at his Jack Manson fight. You look at the Adesanya fight. The fifth round, ah, Jack Marshman at the end of the third round, he's talking mess. If he brings that guy out in the beginning of the fight, Drickus Duplass, again, the tsunami of offense that I like to call him, um, it could lead to a counter. And Sean isn't the most durable guy in the world. We saw what happened when he fought Alex Pierre. You know, he got knocked the fuck out. So it's not impossible. You know, he doesn't have an iron chin. You know what I'm saying? He, he, can, you know, Zalesquito Santos smoked him with the, uh, with the wheel kick. He can be hurt and he can, you know, be dropped. I mean, Usman dropped him, you know? Um, and obviously the grappling, I don't think will be in t- uh, a factor in terms of Drickus just chain wrestling for five straight rounds and beating him. But I do think it could lead to openings on the feet because the wrestling feints and the threat of the takedown. We saw it affect Sean deeply in the Usman fight. So it's there. We know Sean's not the most durable. And I think Sean is less durable than Drickus because Drickus doesn't have defense. But, you know, he's been in the fire a lot more than Sean and he survived a little more, I, I guess. But, um... But, um, so all those opportunities are there for Drickus to go out there and take advantage. And I, I do think Drickus has a real solid chance of winning this fight. I really, really do. But I, I just, I keep going back to Deshaun Strickland's side. And, that, and that's where I'm kind of leaning towards. I, I am leaning towards Mr. Deshaun Strickland. Uh, and I, I'll kind of give you guys a, a more analytical reason why I do think um, he, he wins this fight. I think if you watch the Roberto Soldic fight with uh, Drickus Duplass, if Sean, Sean doesn't have to back up the whole fight, you know, I don't think he has to do that. And Roberto didn't. Um, if, if Drickus is putting too much pressure on you, you get back up for a little bit, but go right back to putting him on, on the back foot, putting the pressure on him. And that's what Soldic did. He got out of the way of the offense of Drickus and then put his offense on Drickus constantly with the right out canders, the body kicks. Now, obviously, Sean doesn't have body kicks, but he has teeps. So Sean's gonna have to use the teeps like crazy. Uh, the right hand instead of the bit, you know, the you know the jab they use is like is gonna have to probably be more used in this fight. Um, and and just controlling the awkwardness. And that's such a weird way to say it, but that's what Soldic did was control the awkwardness of uh Drifters Plus. That's what Brad Tavares did in the first round was control the awkwardness. Make him pay for his mistakes and, and, and make sure you, you make that um, your first priority is the slip and rip. You know, you have to slip and rip. You have to make him hesitate because Robert Whitaker tried to out jab him and all a whole fucking Drickus was like, is that all you got is a jab? And he fucking punished him. So Sean's going to have to throw that right hand a lot more. And Sean does have it, man. You saw in the Adesanya fight in the later rounds, he was bobbing and weaving. He was slipping and ripping. And he does have that. And I, I just feel like Sean is the... I, I, would, I don't know. Like he he is the more tested fighter in the UFC. We've seen him five rounds. We haven't seen Drickus in a five-round UFC title fight main event. We've seen... Uh, Sean Strickland in that and we all know when you defend your title well, not when you defend your when you win the title in your first title offense you get five percent better and I think we're gonna see a way better Sean Strickland coming to this matchup against Drickus and I don't think Drickus talking mess about his childhood is gonna deplete him or not or decrease his fight IQ I think he's gonna go out there and be more motivated to win and be smart about it and just Eric Nixon and just the whole 
extreme couture crew that Sean Strickland has and all the people that back him, I, I just feel like it's just going to be a little too much for Drakus Duplass. And that's one of the reasons why I think Sean Strickland is going to win the fight. But here's the second reason. So just hold up, y'all. Let me get some USA in this. Oh, and your second reason, brother. <laughs> you heard it here first, baby. America ain't losing their second world title champion on the 20th, baby. And Mr. Drickus Duplass, you refugee, you better get ready because Deshaun Strickland is coming for you, baby. And you thought he made fight predictions, forgot about your colonizer having ass. <laughs> oh, well, what you did to my guy, Derek Brunson, well, payback's a hoe. Yeah, I love you for what you did to Robert Weeper Whitaker. But hey, old crimes must still be paid. And Mr. Deshaun Strickland will make you pay with a jab, a cross, and a little bit of USA. So eat your damn vitamins. Get your prayers ready because you're not winning that world title hope you guys enjoyed the video love y'all goodbye it's your boy ebay i'm out of here and yeah usa ho enjoy love y'all and goodbye i'm gonna go check that out and uh hey subscribe to ebay's fight prediction let's keep the ebay fight predictions nation growing Yeah, <laughs> it's okay, man. It's a lot of that sad, dude. I used to be scared at night. Like, uh, I used to stand up. Like, I heard when I was a kid that, like, if you peed around your, like, animals could pee somewhere that other animals wouldn't come. You know what I'm talking about? You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> huh? Yeah, Have you ever heard that? Yeah, I'm sorry, bud. So, ah, oh, man. <laughs> I'm sorry, buddy. That's all good, dude. <laughs> we don't have to talk, man. I can just sit here with you for a minute. <laughs> oh, six seconds. I can just sit here.